So, anybody who knows me knows that I really like superheroes. And they also know that my favorite superhero of all time is Batman. I think I probably know more about Batman than anything else in life. And this is the show that made me fall in love with the character. I grew up in the early 2000s era, and the early 2000s, I'd say from 2000 to 2010, had some of the best TV shows, cartoons, and definitely movies. Saturday mornings, I grew up watching things like Shaolin Showdown, Jackie Chan Adventures, Johnny Test, Sonic X, so many memories, so many shows, and of course, The Batman. And this show was the crown jewel of cartoons for me growing up. And it's very underrated. I don't hear a lot of people talk about this show. A lot of people I've talked to have never even seen it. Like it didn't exist for six years. This show aired on TV for six years. And of course I didn't know this at the time, but this was a completely different take on the character. When the show first starts, Bruce Wayne has only been Batman for three years. He's still learning, he's still growing, and he's seen as an urban legend. And that provides a lot of stories and cool angles we don't usually see. And I think the creators did a good job at showing how difficult it was for Bruce Wayne balancing the two halves of his life. I failed twice today, Alfred. As the Batman and as Bruce Wayne. I tried to do everything and failed to accomplish anything. You are, after all, only one man, Master Bruce. As the series continued, we got to see Bruce literally grow into the Jaded Dark Knight, that indestructible, perfect force. And Bruce Wayne in the show is pretty cool too. He was young, he played basketball, he listened to heavy metal. He was just as interesting to watch as Batman was. Now, when it comes to the animation style, the animation style is very unique. Kind of got a Japanese anime quality to it. And if it looks familiar, it should. Because it was made by the same guy who did the artwork for Jackie Chan Adventures. And I like it, honestly. The colors pop, things just stand out more, it's flashy, but it still has a dark tone to it. And you add that to the music, it's unbelievable. And, I mean, for a kid's show, Batman was actually pretty ruthless in this. You don't notice it at the top, but looking back, it's like, dang, that dude was putting people in a coma. Your aim stinks. You try to stop me, and fail. As a kid, I started with Superman. And Superman is cool. He can fly, shoot lasers out of his eyes, he stops the bad guys, he can crush a gun with his bare hands. You think, that's tight. But then, that goes off, another show goes on, it's nighttime, you hear the music, kind of eerie. It's the complete opposite of Superman's happy world. Like, uh, a dark Avenger with the mask, the cool looking car, all those things got my attention way more. And let me tell you, as a little little kid, six, seven, eight, nine year old, sitting in front of the TV on a Saturday morning with cereal or pancakes or something, watching Batman suit up, there was nothing else on Kids WB or Toonami like it. I'm, I'm telling y'all. The Bat Wave.
Yeah, it, it, it was cool. It was cool. They, they did a good job at showing the different suit ups. I also thought this show did an amazing job transforming characters we've seen, giving them outrageous designs and elevating lesser known characters, making them even cooler. Firefly. Batman. <laughs> I see you survived your crack up. Did someone say cute and cuddly? Who are you? I'm Ragdoll! <laughs> Out of all the character designs, though, I think the Joker is the best. Joker's design in this show is the most memorable. He looks like a jester. He's it, like in other iterations in the old show, he looked like kind of a clown. It's hard to explain. In, in this show, he actually looks like a Joker. Like when you look at a Joker playing card, that's how he looks. He's crazy, he is so mentally insane. The long green hair, he's barefoot, wearing a straight jacket with super long sleeves. This is the Joker I grew up watching. He had toys, he had razor sharp playing cards, exploding jack-in-the-boxes. This version is the most unique. We haven't seen anything like this before, or honestly since. <laughs> Fool's gold! Ah, queen of spades! Joker, you better not... Don't make me slap you, Jack! Get it? Slap Jack? Bullified! <laughs> <laughs> When I first saw the Dark Knight movie, I actually thought Heath Ledger's Joker was borrowing elements from the Batman TV show. The Dark Knight came out in 2008. The Batman was the only Batman TV show airing in 2008. It made sense to me, but that's just me speculating. design choice I was never really a fan of was Bangs. He, he looks like this giant red Hulk knockoff. I, I don't get that design. Never have liked this. Like, is, is his skin red? Is, what, why does he look like that? Like, when he looks like in regular form, I think he looks kind of badass, honestly. He looks like an assassin, but then he turns into this huge monstrosity and it's like, okay, who, who, who approved this? Like, really? Some, somebody honestly thought this was a good idea for Bane? Out of all the ways I've seen him drawn and illustrated, this, this is absolutely good. But the best villain, story-wise, was Clayface. I think this show is the only show out of every Batman, whether it's comics, Arkham games, other animated series, Justice League, anything. This Batman show is the only Batman show that represented Clayface well. Every other medium did it good, but this one did it the best. They really gave him feet of clay. This is a character we've gotten to know from the very first episode, Detective Ethan Bennett. He's best friends with Bruce Wayne. He's a very likable character, and it really was tragic seeing this terrible thing happen to him. He's a good man. He, he, he does his job well, been on the force for six years. Out of all the villains in this show, you can't help but have the most empathy for him. He had a lot of character development. He struggled because he believed that Gotham was better off because of the Batman, but he caught a lot of heat from his superiors for not being able to take him down. He was literally fighting for his identity to stay as Ethan Bennett, but the Clayface persona is taking over. It's like he started out as a good guy, became a bad guy, was fighting desperately to stay a good guy, but it's like his darker dominant side just took over. It couldn't help. Him. And it was all literally because of the job. The job took its toll on him. This show did such a good job establishing everything and building Batman. Starting him out as a vigilante, a loner being hunted by the cops, 
Then at the end of season two, we're introduced to Commissioner Gordon and him working side by side with the Bat. And of course, Batgirl was in there also. In later seasons, he gets Robin and the whole Bat family is slowly forming. And by the end of things, we're introduced to the Justice League. Batman is now a part of a team. He's that veteran, battle-scarred Dark Knight, unfazed, unbreakable, and refined. This is the show that did it for me. My love for Batman started with this Saturday morning cartoon on Toonami Blog. The C started with this show, and the show ended in 2009. After it ended, then you had the Arkham Games. 2009, Batman Arkham Asylum, which was way darker, more adult-like, and scarier with villains I had never seen before or even heard of. Scarecrow, Victor Zaz, the serial killer. The Arkham games, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City made me check out the original Batman show from the early 90s, which made me get familiar with the DCAU, Justice League, Batman Beyond, those sorts of shows which also made me get familiar with Tim Burton's Batman. All of those things are building my love for the character more and more. Then as I started getting even older, 11, 12, 13, 14, I was collecting comic books. And none in particular, I was just getting my hands on whatever I could get. Stories from the 80s, stories from the 90s, the early 2000s, current stories. So, and when doing that, it's like I'll have some that were good, some that weren't so good, and some that were like a continuation of one. It's like I'll start it and it's like this is part three or four. And it's like, oh dang, I need to get part one and two. And it's like I'm, I'm collecting it now. Just going deeper and deeper and deeper, finding out about Jason Todd or Hush or Barbara Gordon getting shot. And you also have the Christian Bale Batman movies in the midst, and the DCAU New 52 movies. And of course, I watched videos online, did research over certain characters and certain character origins. So, with all of those things, by the time you get to... Starting in 2004, by the time you get to 2015, with Batman Arkham Knight, I was a seasoned pro, so when I see a moment like this, yeah, I'm screaming, I'm, I'm excited, because that's my favorite character. And the older I get, 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, the more it grows. Now, it's Robert Pattinson's Batman movie. Some things never change, and my Batman collection, the hundreds of comics I have, read and reviewed on this channel all came from sitting in front of the TV as a little kid watching the Batman. Yo, pointy ears. Uh, say hello to my little friend. back on this show up to date, it doesn't really hold up as well. I can admit, I think it's a great kid show, no doubt. But it's a superhero show. I prefer the darker, more scarred Bruce Wayne from the more adult generations. With this show, every villain is just a villain. You don't really care about them. They don't have cool layers of character development. For instance, Penguin, for example. Normally, when I think of Penguin up today, I think of, he's a crime boss, he owns the Iceberg Lounge, he's very intelligent. Um, he usually doesn't get caught by the police or in his schemes or stuff. He, he's seen as kind of a legitimate businessman, but we all know who he really is, Oswald Cobblepot. Um, you know, that, that's, how, that's how I think of him. In this show, he's nothing like that, he's, he's just a bad guy. Half the times you don't even really know his motivation. He likes to steal, I know that, but he does get caught and, and you know, he knows Kung Fu and stuff like that and it's just like, as a kid watching that growing up, when you're like five years old, it's cool, but then it's like as you get older, you start watching other stuff, play the Arkham games and stuff like that, you read the comic books and then you go back to that, it's like, oh, jeez, who, who, Whose idea was it to, why is he doing Kung Fu? Like, what, what the hell? 
But really, I will never downgrade this show because it introduced me to Batman. And it was a good stepping stone to the more likable version of Batman in my mind. So, do I watch it up to date? No. But it always holds a special place in my heart for the very reason is it introduced me to the character. I would not be, maybe, I don't know, I probably would not be the Batman fan that I am up to date if I never watched this show growing up. Maybe I would, but I doubt it. But, yep, this is the show. This is the show that did it for me. I, I never hear anybody talk, I've seen a few videos online. It's, it's starting to get a little bit more recognition and a little bit more popularity. But for the most part, it, never really hear anything about it um you never hear like everything i just said about it especially like growing up with it watching it this was my batman show i didn't watch any other show from 2004 to 2009 concerning batman this was it i don't hear people talk like that you know a lot of times i don't even people don't even know what it never even seen it what batman show is this uh, this looks cool or i never watched this before it's like, bro, what were y'all doing on Saturdays? <laughs> this show came on, I remember the time, 8.30, 37 Central. Came on right after Jackie Chan Adventures. And then it would suck too because growing up, at first I didn't have a TV in my room, so I had to watch the TV in the living room. And other Saturday morning shows came on too. And my mom liked to watch Disney channel with that so raven so it's like and my sister did too so it's like there'd be some Saturdays like we fighting I'm waking up at 7 a.m. so I can get my hands on that remote you know <laughs> it was like that kids these days don't know we didn't have um YouTube and stuff to where it's like oh I can just we didn't have soap today to where it's like oh you can just watch it later no it's like if I miss this episode I'm gonna be lost next week I'm gonna have to wait an entire week and then I'm gonna be lost next Saturday because I don't know what the hell just happened so but it was cool it was cool I like I like this show a lot and um, I would recommend watching it um, honestly it's, it's a pretty good show it's it's the show that made me fall in love with the character of Batman and Bruce Wayne and his entire world of enemies and allies Good heavens. Sorry about the mess, Alfred. The front door too conventional for you, sir. 